there, I'm Allie and welcome to my channel and welcome to another episode of Rental Redesign. Today we are diving right in and we are going outside to my patio. Now this is a space that I have already tackled once before but I wanted to give it a whole new look and makeover for 2021 and let me tell you, it turned out so good, a huge difference from last year. So let's jump right into it. morning everybody and welcome to day one of my patio makeover for 2021. I have a lot on my agenda today that I need to tackle so let's first get started with tidying everything up getting this patio nice and clean so that I can do the total transformation. my design inspo for the space because I always like including kind of my thought process. I'm all about neutrals. I just want a beautiful neutral space that is just calming and nice to enjoy. I do still love a good boho element so I want to see boho elements and textures reflected throughout the different decor and overall I just want this space to feel relaxing and inviting and enjoyable throughout the summer months. And now as I was planning this space, there was a one thing that I really wanted to do, and that was make a hanging vertical herb garden. Now I wanted to actually do this project last year, but obviously because of all the restrictions and things like that, I never got around to this project. So this year, I am so excited to be tackling it. So let me pass you over to VoiceOver Alley. You're going to need two four foot one by twos and five three quarter inch by two two foot long boards. Now I wanted to cut my four foot boards down to size because I didn't want my garden to be four foot. I wanted it to be three feet. So I measured and marked and then cut it out using my miter box and handsaw. But you could totally make this hanging garden however tall or short that you want. It is completely customizable. Now that the vertical boards are cut to size, it is time to start adding on the horizontal boards for this amazing hanging garden. So let's get to work. Before assembling, I did want to lay out all of the boards first just to get an idea of their placement and the measurements. If you make this vertical garden exactly how I did, then it is seven inches between each board. And I made sure to mark that on both of the vertical boards so that everything turned out nice and neat in the end. Next, you're going to want to drill pilot holes using a small drill bit into both ends of each of the horizontal boards. To make this super, super strong, I used wood glue first underneath the boards, and then I used a drywall screw to attach them together. And especially when assembling the frame, because I started with the frame first, I made sure to put down all of the screws, but not tightening them completely, just so that I can make sure everything was manipulated and nice and 90 degrees and nice and level, all of that wonderful stuff. To really secure these screws, I did use my screw gun, but you do want to make sure that you're very careful and take this slowly because the screw gun can split the wood boards. And I just continued the process of using wood glue and the drywall screws all the way down the remainder of the frame to add all five of the horizontal boards. Once the wood glue is dry, it is time to spray paint, and I've been loving this Rust-Oleum Universal Satin Black Spray Paint, and I gave the entire thing two coats of the paint, making sure that I followed the instructions on the can for dry time between each coat. All right, now that it was getting dark outside, I decided to come inside and work on an art piece for my patio. And this is a technique that I have been dying to try and it's so simple. So let's head back over to that voiceover. 
Again, bringing back in this miter box, I decided to cut down these really thin boards that I have. I believe they are a two by a fourth inch or two by a half inch. And I wanted to create some beveled edges in order to make a frame for this wall art. But of course, this part is completely optional. I just felt like being really, really extra here. Now I'm gonna be using this scrap piece of plywood that I have. It's a super odd measurement. I think it's like 13 by 21 inches or something like that. Super inconvenient. But anyways, in order to put the frame on and make sure that it's nice and even all the way around, I used these Dollar Tree wood cubes and glued down six of them to the back of the plywood. And I did use a combination of both wood glue and hot glue so that this would secure into place right away, but then also have a really good hold over time. Then again, I used the combination of wood glue and hot glue to begin assembling the frame and it looked really, really good when that was complete. Now the secret ingredient to this textured wall art is drywall joint compound. <laughs> I just used one of the really cheap plastic putty knives from the hardware store to apply the drywall compound all over the plywood board. It was super simple to do. And once I got down a nice base coat, I did then go in with the putty knife to start adding a little bit of a texture. I did play around with this for quite a bit until I finally achieved my desired look and texture, which you'll get to see in the reveal. But once I was satisfied with the design, I set this aside to dry overnight. morning it's day two of my patio makeover i just finished up my artwork this morning and now it is time to be back outside and get some of the other parts of this makeover done so first things first i want to hang up my patio curtains and my lights this is the exact same process that i did in my patio makeover video last year and i also made a separate blog post about how i got these patio curtains up and i will be sure to link that down in the description box curtains are up it is time for my favorite part which is adding in the rugs so we're gonna start with this rug here which is the Ikea Tipheed rug it was only $10 at Ikea and it's actually the exact rug that I put down last year like literally the same one I just washed it in my washing machine let it dry and we're gonna put it down it is a little bit faded from use from last year but I figured why not let this $10 rug get some extra use now, if you saw last year's patio makeover video, you might remember I said this. Well, I would have loved to get one of those beautiful, gorgeous, natural jute rugs. It was completely out of my budget. Well, this year I am making those dreams happen. Here is my jute rug, and I am so excited to put this down. I found it on clearance from Hobby Lobby way back in January, waiting to be put down on the patio. <laughs> hanging garden that I started in the beginning of the video. Well, it is finally time to finish it. These are the flower pots that I chose. I got them off of Amazon, but I really love the stone look that they have. Now, I thought zip ties would be the easiest way to assemble all of these flower pots. So what you're gonna do is first make a loop with the zip ties, and I did bring in the flower pot just to make sure I didn't make the loop too small, and you don't wanna tighten this up all the way just yet. Then I took two more zip ties, and these will be used to attach the loops to the horizontal boards. Then you see me here bringing back in the flower pot and tightening up the zip ties to really lock it into place. I then just repeated that going all the way up the board and I decided to use nine flower pots and only put the flower pots on the three middle boards, leaving the top one and bottom one empty just for symmetry sake and also because I didn't wanna have to take care of that many plants, let's be honest here. <laughs> I 
I found it easiest to tighten up the zip ties on the horizontal boards by flipping the entire garden around and really pulling them tight. And then I just went in with my wire cutters to trim off the excess zip ties and then hung it up on my door. projects are done it is time to really start filling the space bringing in the furniture and everything like that now this year I'm actually sticking with the exact same chairs that I used last year and they were just super cheap chairs that I got from Big Lots and well they looked really cheap you can see that in the clip right here so this year I decided I wanted to make them look a little more high-end so the first thing I did was just spray paint all of the metal legs and arms on both of the chairs and the little table that I bought with the set turning them from a kind of dusty dark brown color to a nice deep black and that made all of the difference and then to make these chairs just extra comfy, extra lush looking, I don't know if that's the correct word, I sewed up some custom seat cushions. Now I didn't make a full tutorial on this because they are super custom to my exact chairs. I didn't worry about covering the back of the chair because I will be adding a throw pillow. And it's a good thing that I painted the chairs black because then my DIY IKEA hack Gladham table would match perfectly with them. I will be sure to include a card up above for that video and a link in the description. You need to check out these awesome outdoor IKEA hacks. It is time to style the space and I decided I'm going to bring in a couple faux plants as well. That way I have a mix of real and faux and you know, a little less to take care of throughout the summer. So let's get to my favorite part of the video and getting this space looking amazing. I had a few more plants to add to the space so I hung up my hanging basket here. And then at Walmart, I picked up this faux rattan utensil holder, and I thought this would make a perfect railing planter basket. Now, I did the same thing last year with two wire baskets where I used a Dollar Tree over the door hook to attach it to my railing and just used a few zip ties to secure it into place, and this works so perfectly. And then I added in some flower pots that were nice and coordinated and my small little plants. we've all been waiting for the best part of the entire video the final reveal and I'm gonna show you that in three two one that completes this patio space. I want to hear what you think of this transformation in the comments. What was your favorite part? Personally, I am in love with that DIY hanging garden. That was a dream DIY for me. A little bit out of my comfort zone because I don't do a lot of building, but now I'm like itching to do way more building and start learning how to use power tools and things like that because 
That project was so much fun. If you enjoyed this video, I do have some more rental redesign episodes planned for the future, and I also post new DIY videos and ideas every single week, so be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. And of course, don't forget to give this video a like. Again, if you wanna check out that IKEA hack video, I will put that on the screen right here. And thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.